What's up, my babies? This is episode 160 of Congratulations. Crazy. Crazy. What up, what up? Hi, how's it going? Hi. Dude, nobody starts a podcast like that. Hi. I do. Because you got to switch things up, you know? You got to make sure you're keeping it real. You got to make sure you're keeping it moving. And so far, I know the podcast has only been going for 30 seconds, but I've legitimately said absolutely nothing worth uh, anything. So it's all good. <clears throat> but here comes something important. West Palm Beach, Florida, there's very few tickets left for my March, 21st, my March 20th and March 21st show. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if I'm going to add more. My agent just hit me up and said, hey, you want to do two more shows? And that's, you know, you want to do... He, what he actually said was, do you want to do two more shows? And naturally that's... But I'm not sure, you know what I mean? But I'm not sure. Because I may just chill. I may not want to do it. So there's like a few tickets left. It'll sell out, so go get it now. Um... <clears throat> One time a sponsor got mad that I did this afterwards and they thought it was so disrespectful and they, they were like, "What? we're not fucking re-upping with you guys. And I was like, dude, you don't get the fucking podcast at all. So rude. And so, I, dude, because that's, yeah, we don't want you. We don't fucking want you, dude. You don't get the humor, we don't want you. We don't want you. <laughs> you don't get the humor, we don't want you, dude. Don't want you. When somebody isn't in the group, dude, and they don't understand what's going on, and you see them, and you're fucking popping off, and you're having a good time, and you're laughing, and they're just like this, <laughs> we don't want you. You understand? Get out. Get out. You know what? The whole thing, you can sit with us. How they flipped it on you, I flip it back to you can't sit with us, dude. I'm a mean girl. I'm a fucking straight up mean girl. You understand? That's me. That's me, baby. Crystalia the mean girl. Uh, and so well, that's going to be how it's going to be. West Palm Beach, we're going to come in, uh, and and do it. Robinson, Mississippi, some Reese, uh, Roner Park, California, some Reese, and uh, Las Vegas, ne Nevada. You know why, and you know why, dude. And when I'm in Las Vegas, not really. Go, I go to bed. Pretty much the same time that I would when I was in LA. I put when people go to Las Vegas, then they just hang out until like seven or eight or nine or ten, dude. It's one thing to stay up until six. You know, you want to see the sunrise. You want to see some shit. You want to see some shit that you wouldn't normally see. Maybe you don't usually get up early. You don't get to see it. So you're like, I'll stay up late and I'll see it. Seven, oh boy. Eight, but dude, one time I stayed up till ten. I mean, you don't understand what's happening. It's like one of those movies where a guy, wake, you know, where they fucking wash everything out and you're and the guy's just like hearing like a high pitched sound. You know what happened? It's like when fucking um, it's like when the guy from uh, Saving Private Ryan is looking for his arm. Um, speaking of which, I saw this movie Good Time uh, with Robert Pattinson and one of those and Benny Softa, Softy, Benny Softy. They did the. They directed the. The Softy Brothers directed it, and and they also directed uh, Uncut Gems, which you probably know about. I don't know if you know about the movie Good Time, but it's a good movie, man. And goddamn, man, these guys are good in it, man. The acting is so good in this movie, it rivals fucking Colin Firth and Spe King's Speech. Lie, 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 lie. Dude, it starts with this dude. Benny Softy's playing him, and I thought he was mentally disabled for real, but he's not. He's acting mentally disabled. And I'm like, that's a real, that's a guy using acting to do that. And how come people aren't, you know, that the, the reason why people aren't canceling him is because he's so good. He's just like, they ask him questions, and he's just like, no. They're like, hey, so did this happen? And he's like, no. And you're like, oh, that that sucks. I feel bad for that guy. And he's just like, why, why are you writing that down? I don't want that down. I don't want that written down. And you're like, ah, poor kid. And then you realize I, I, I YouTube the video of him and he's just like talking like, like a regular dude. He's just like, well, when we first asked Adam Sandler to do the movie, I'm like, what happened to fucking, no, why are you writing that down? Huh? Oh, we got another Christian Bale on our hands. 
Guy directed it too, and did the score, and edited it. Uh. How's he doing it? Also, the last name, Softy fucking rocks. That's, that, that's, that's a fucking, that last name is awesome. And dude, Robert Pattinson is such a good actor. Dude, I, that guy is fucking so good. Every time I see him in a movie, I'm like, and I hate when people say this, but do you forget that it's the guy? You're like, ah, yeah. I, I. When people are like, I forgot it was the guy. You're like, all right, dude, you're a school teacher and you're just saying shit. But this guy, Robert Pattinson, is so good. He's British, dude. What's he doing playing a guy from Queens? Can't tell. He goes like this to his London accent. He goes like this, don't watch. And then he's like, hey, what are you doing? I use guys. And I'm just like, damn. Dude, he's so good. I'm a fucking movie reviewer, dude. The fucking softy, you know? Softy Brothers, the last names. Uncut Gems. Got to see it. I got to see Uncut Gems. I haven't seen it yet. But Good Time is good. My buddy said, you got to see Good Time. And I was like, okay. And I was like, and, and he was like, it's like one of the best movies of the year. And I, he kept talking about it so much, and I got really upset. How many times are you going to bring something up, you know? Like, I had a buddy once. He's a comedian. His name is D- Dean Del Rey. And one time... Dude, I swear to God, he brought up the new MacBook Pro that was coming out so much, and one and and, and the Fantastic Mix, Mr. Fox. In one week, he wouldn't stop talking about the new MacBook Pro that was coming out and Fantastic Mr. Fox that was coming out. And I was like, bro, I don't give a shit, man. One night at the diner, I just said, hey, man, I want you to do me a favor, and I want you to listen to me, man. I want you to stop talking about the fucking Fantastic Mr. Fox, bro. And he started laughing so hard because he knows that he brought it up for too long. And too many times. And he knows. He knows that he was bringing up the MacBook Pro for too many times. Dude, get a MacBook Pro or don't get a MacBook Pro. But stop talking about how thin it is. It was unbelievable. He was just like, oh, yeah. Oh, you got it. Yeah, we see Fantastic Mr. Fox. I saw it twice. Oh. Oh, you got to get the MacBook Pro. You see it? Oh, my buddy Dean is hilarious. He's a comedian. You should follow him. But dude, he's so funny. He'll be, he says the most basic shit sometimes. Dude, he'll be eating food and he'll be like, oh, the flavor. And you're just like, you mean what propels food? Me, I mean, the only reason you eat. Like he'll listen to the see The thing about the, that album is the sound. It's just killer. And you're like, all right, bro. The, you mean the sound of music? It's unbelievable. The color in a painting. That he'll do that, and I'll and I'll just throw my hands up. I'll be like, all right, bro. You know. So uh, get specific, Dean. But I like it though. I like him because of that. One time we were in an argument about he was in an argument with another guy about a, a, a band. The guy rocks. He he does mu- he does music. Well, he used to do music, but I was a comedian. But dude, he and he's got a podcast called Let There Be Talk or Let There Be Rock or some shit. Let There Be Talk because it's a podcast. And um, and he was talking about this guy about he was like, nah, this guy on the band. He, he was like, this one guy was like, he was like, nah, he he's not like that. And he was like, oh yeah, it is. It's that guy. And he was like, no, nah, it's not that guy. And he was like, oh yeah, it is. And the guy said, how do you know? And Dean lifted up his shirt and had the guy's face tattooed on his fucking shank. And I had to, I went home. I immediately fucking went, see you guys. Whoop, whoop. Well, fuck this. I went, got in bed immediately with all my clothes on. Because, bro, you can't be like that. I got to get tattoos. I got to get all sorts of tattoos. This way, if anybody gets in an argument with me, I just show them the tattoos and they shut the fuck up about it. They'd be like, that's not right. Oh, Yeah. You arguing with me about the moon? Are you kidding me? Look at this. And I fucking show you my left shoulder and I got the moon on it. Why do you think I got that? Because I know so much about the moon. And they go, all right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, anyway, that movie is good. Good time. And I always want to, I want to keep saying, oh, there it is. Check out Dean Del Rey's sweet Bon Scott tattoo. It's Bon Scott. Well, I don't know what it is. Look at his face in that picture, you know? I got to get all tatted up, bro. I got to get all tatted up. My tattoo artist is always so busy, though, and going around the world and shit. I want to get new ones. 
I got to get new ones. I want to get fucking tied up. The other day, the other day, I looked uh, at, a, at at myself. I tried on this uh, shirt or something. I don't even remember. Maybe I wasn't even, but I was walking through a mirror and I was in a clothing store. I know that. I don't want to lie to you guys. You know what I mean? Maybe I was trying something on. Maybe I wasn't. Let's leave that open, dude. You know, I don't lie here. So I put my, uh, sh- I-, I had this, sh- the- I-, I was clothed and I was like, wow, it would be fucking pretty ripping if something was peeking out of my neckline. Like if I just had some fucking, like some wings or something. I know I'm not, I mean, I'm, look, I know I'm going to be 40, but I'm the young, I'm also the youngest man alive. And bro, that shit would look banging. Dude, I need to get, I want to get a crown tattooed under my hairline. Oh, dude, do you know how much pussy you get for real if you have a crown under your hairline? Not that I want, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm, you know, that's not me. That's not my style, but wow, dude. You just got to be so comfortable and also secretly uncomfortable to get a tattoo. Fa- Bro, how about Chris Brown got a fucking shoe on his cheek? Eh? Hey, Chris Brown got a tattoo of a fucking shoe on his cheek. Another guy invented that shoe, and then Chris Brown got it on his face. Such a beta fucking cuck move, dude. Ew, you know? Ew. It's a Jordan 3. Chris Brown got a Jordan 3 dangling from his ear. Looks like a tendril. S Jewish. Chris Brownowitz. Dude. Chris Brownstein. Uh, yeah. But anyway, like, that's insane, dude. To get the fucking someone else made a shoe and he put it on the side of his face. That guy's mixed up, huh? And I don't even think it's mixed up to get a face tattoo anymore. I think you're kind of, you know, if that's you, fine. But Chris Brown, what is he, 40? Like, you've been around, bro. Now you're getting a face tattoo. I guess he covered the rest of them up, self up. Maybe it's, maybe it's not so bad. Ew, dude. Bro, he's so handsome. I feel like an old grandma. What are you doing? You're so handsome. What'd you do with your face? Let me look at it. Let me look at it. You know? Like, what is he doing, dude? Chew doing. It's for conch, but chew doing, dude. Um, um, yeah, dude. Uh, I, I don't. To get something, like, just get, like, a, a fucking... That's why I got animals. I got a plane. It doesn't have a fucking Delta symbol on it, you know? When you have fucking... Uh, when you have a thing on your on your thing. It's weird enough that guys... Tat, I, that's why I got it from Dr. Wu, because I wanted it... I like his art, and I was like, that's it. That, you know, I like his art. I Whatever, I'm the same way. I'm a fucking... I, should, I might as well got a t- tattoo of a shoe on my forehead. Mm. But my point is, I need more tattoos. And my, my, my dude, the dude who does it is always in Japan or some shit. I got to get a new guy. So who wants to tattoo me, man? Um, But I only get, like, cool shit. Sexy as shit shit. I need something peeking out my neckline, dude. <laughs> Bro, is that Chris peeking out his neckline to Leah? Yep. I got this here on the back wall. It's a, it's a photoshopped art of The Last Supper. With me as Jesus is sacrilegious. Feel like I'm going to hell just because I hung it up. Um, and it's got all the the cat, you know, the podcast crew on it. You got Theo, you got Craig, you got all the guys I talk about. You got Bobby Lee, Brian Callen, you got Andrew Santino, Mark Hayes, Zach Noncovio, Brendan Schaub, Whitney, Mike Linochi, my brother, Sam and Butters, and Wade the Dog. And uh, who did it? Ray, uh, I got it right here. Ray, Rob Hay Design. So thanks for that. Um, yeah. Oh, these face tattoos. Like what, what's Post Malone got always tired? That's pretty, pretty, pretty gung-ho about always being tired. Like, you know? It's pretty gung-ho about always being tired. Like you never ask that guy to do some sh- something. Hey, dude, do you want... Oh, wait, what's it? Oh, never mind, dude. Yo, do you want to go play some fucking kickball? Oh, shit, sorry, man. I didn't see the tattoos under your eyes. Um, You know what I don't get is this... You know what I don't get, dude? This re- This reclining seat argument. This reclining seat argument where the video went viral. I tweeted it when the dude was... The, the lady reclined her seat and the bitch-ass hoe dude 
behind her was like punching the back of her seat because he thought it was disrespectful that she reclined the seat. And the dude was just trying to watch videos on his phone. Hey, dude, you're a bitch, man. If the seat reclines, let it recline. Johnny Cochran. If the seat reclines, let it recline. But dude, let it recline, man. The seat reclines. And the guy's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But people, I can't believe there's people out there that actually are like, no, it's disrespectful to recline your seat. Bro, I paid for it. Also, the seat reclines. I'm not rejiggering the seat to make it recline. It reclines. Therefore, if my seat goes to your fucking taint, swear it's gone. Take it up with fucking Delta, man. This shit isn't my problem. Get, how about this? Check in and get a fucking better seat so your seat ref- reclines to the guys all in the back wall. Bro, just because you're incompetent doesn't mean she shouldn't fucking be comfortable. Fuck that. I cannot believe this bitch ass dude is trying to watch what is he trying to watch some fucking movie on his on his privileged ass iPhone and he's just bumping her head like that in the front. The lady's like 50 fucking years old. This guy's younger than me if you can believe that. And this guy, what a bitch, dude. Of course he's got just a beard too and a bald head. Those guys are the most a bitch. You know? Or the most a bitch guy is a guy who's got hair this long and and a completely shaved face, and it, and it's gelled and and there's one little piece coming forward, you know. Oh fuck, he rolls his. He, you know what he does? He rolls his fucking um, uh, sleeves up like this. He does it like this, like against his fucking the 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 side. That's so bitch, dude, that he's doing that, and it makes me angry, and I want to I want to live with that girl and take care of her, even though she's older than me, because that's so insane and insensitive to do that. That guy's a bitch-ass hoe. Like, let her recline. She paid for it. Wow, dude. And I can't stop thinking about when Peter Pablo says, yeah, and I say, Hanukkah, because I love it, I love it, and they pay me for it in his song. Cool how I keep thinking about that. But um, yeah, dude, that's so insane. And so also when I, you don't understand, man, when I'm, and this happens rarely because I fucking check and also, you know, now fucking bags, bags, of course I fucking fly first class, but you know, when I was in the back back and somebody goes and reclines into my fucking chest region, guess what? There we go. I'm dealing with something. That's all that's happening. I'm relaxing as best I can with someone's face in my in my chest. I'll give them a massage, dude, because I fucked up and I know it. And great, I'll make the best of a bad situation. I fucked up. I'll give them a scalp massage. I'll put my feet over their, you know, torso and give them a scalp massage. Like I'm some monkey on their back helping out. Because, dude, you fucked up. You got the last seat. You don't have to get the last seat. Everything about flying is uncomfortable. Everything. So just suck it up. You think we want to be here? 30,000 feet in the air? If it... Yeah. I don't get it. I don't get... I, I, I don't like when people are disrespectful. I don't get how people think that the reclining the seat thing is disrespectful. And you know what? I don't want to hear any of it anymore. I don't want to hear anybody being like, well, it's considerate to, no, dude, it is not. It is considerate. It's actually considerate to not fly. How about that drive? When someone reclines, when I, when I recline all the way back and it goes into somebody's lap, if I, I hope it goes back far enough to where I could open my eyes and see them upside down. And then I want to say, you're welcome. I'm being respectful because this is what I want to do, and we're all in this together. One time I was on the plane. One time I was uh, I was uh, on the plane, and this guy I, I I like was trying to turn my TV on, and I was hitting the button on the TV in front of it, you know, the headrest in front of it, and the guy turns around and he says, "This is my seat, that's yours," and I was like, "Bro, it's crazy how people just go zero to 60. When they're in public, like already pissed off about their situation. 
Nah, you don't need to be like that. I go like that. Nah, you don't need to be like that. Why are you telling me that, sir? People were saying that Europeans don't recline seats, which is fucking stupid, dude. I seen British dudes just like, oh, the way back, all right. People are saying British, oh, yeah, Europeans, they don't recline seats. So why? Because they respect, bro, no way. Yeah, elite British people respect. But, bro, have you seen people that talk like this? I was sitting on my seat all the way back into your fucking penis. That's what I'll do. And I'll start sucking it. I'm not even gay. Fuck it. I don't care. Got to keep my mouth busy on this flight. Go quicker. Yeah, right. I don't care. I'll recline all the way back behind me. I don't know if there's a guy or a girl behind me. Hopefully there's a girl. Because then I'll be knee deep in some fucking wet talk. If there's a penis, I'll just use it as a pillow. Hopefully it ain't hard. Jiggle them around a little bit, balls. Oh, I don't know if I like to put my butt, my head. You, you use one of your balls or your nub. It's one of me fucking seat. <laughs> it's one of me fucking pillows. You got a child, do you? I hope you got a child. Because here we go. We. Those British guys don't risk. Bullshit, man. Bullshit. You seen Europeans, bro? Speaking of which, I was at I was at Equinox. Uh, speaking of which, I was at the gym, and uh, and I uh, and I fucking um, was working out, and then I you know I work out to keep the fucking tax up on my back because I need the fucking camera crews to keep rolling in because there's movies that need to be filmed in the fucking outback. I got a movie about a rainforest coming in and shoot in fucking June, so I got to keep that shit beefy. <clears throat> I got to keep picking stuff up and putting it down because I got to keep the back beef. You understand? The other night, I couldn't fall asleep. I kept hearing... And I was like, what the fuck is going on? I was like, where is that? And I was fucking pulling my hair out, dude. I walked into the fucking bathroom. I got two mirrors si face to face, and I looked in one mirror, through to the other mirror, and I was like, oh, fuck, I forgot I have a rainforest on my back. Wildlife. Anyway, yeah. So I was outside of the gym eating, <clears throat> and fucking Jason Statham walks out, and he's looking at me, bro, like Jason Statham looks, you know? Like he's looking at me like, you know what he's looking at me? Like I'm in a fucking car and he can't see who it is. And I'm like, what's going on here? And he's walking and look at me, not breaking my eyes, my eye contact. And I'm like, nothing's behind me. I know because I already studied because I know my surroundings. But when I sit down, I know what's behind me. And what's behind me now is a wall. And it's about five feet from me. So I know he's not looking at someone behind me. And I know he's not looking at the wall because guess what? I also figured out before I sat down, the wall is nondescript. I'm a detective. All right? You know what I am? A Jason Statham character. So he's walking and he's looking at me and his fucking brows are trying to meet. You understand? They're like at a coffee shop. They're trying to get together. It's their first date and they're into each other. All right? It's like if, if the brows' parents saw them They'd be like, why don't you guys separate a little bit? You're a little bit too comfortable together. But they were trying to meet, which means they were together, which means he was mad dogging me in a bit. But I knew he wasn't mad dogging me because who the fuck am I? And he's got his earphones in and he takes his earphones out and he looks at me and he stops and he says, Chris. And I was like, okay, what's happening? And I say, yeah. And he says, and he starts walking up to me. And I'm like, huh. And he says, I thought that was you, but you know me old age and all. Sometimes I can't tell. And I'm like, I'm knee deep in a conversation with Jason Statham. So I stand up and he says, how you doing, mate? <laughs> and I say, I'm just eating after the gym. I'm just, he says, I thought I saw you in that gym every now and then. And I was like, yeah, I'm just trying to get like you, huh? And I pat his back, and I'm like, just fucking pat it. I pat it, like, what am I doing, you know? And he says, 
Hey, you're trying to get like how I used to be. I'm not like that anymore. I got my dad bod. And I was like, ah, yeah, well, nah, you, you know. And he says, yeah, anyway, he starts walking away. And then he comes back. Like he takes four or five steps and then comes back and he's like, <clears throat> you know, you'd be uh, seeing it from dawn to dawn or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, I was like, uh, we're talking and shit. And I was like, do you live, you live, you're here or what? He's like, yeah, you know, I'm back and forth from London. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, uh, I, well, I don't remember. I don't remember what happened at that point. It was some kind of lull. But then he says, then I said, so you, you're, you said dad bought. I was like, you are a dad, your dad or what? You got kids? He says, oh yeah, it's a thing about kids. I was like, yeah, I'm having my first like any day now. And he says, oh, you're having a kid any day now? I was like, yeah. And he was like, ah, oh, that's really, uh, that's really, uh, that's really special, mate. He was like, well, be careful because you keep eating, you know? You eat whatever's bef- was it whatever's in front of you. The kid will eat it, and then you'll eat it too. Before you know it, you'll be blowing up out to here. You'll be like me. And I was like, ah, yeah. I was like, yeah, you won't see me working out anymore over here, huh? I'll be busy with the kid. And he was like, yeah, I'll be like, hey, what happened to Chris? He used to come here. What, he doesn't come anymore? What the heck? Anyway, I think it's really special you're about to be a dad. That's really awesome. Good luck to you. And he fucking walks away. And I'm like, fucking... Happening. Eh, se, Hollywood. You know, I'm such a Jason Statham uh, uh, fan, and it was so dope, dude, because he's so cool. And I I met him once before. Uh, you know, I I I, I pitched him a, a a movie idea. But I mean, this was years ago. And I just, I guess he remembers me from that, or maybe, I don't know. I don't know, maybe maybe he fucking, hey, dude, maybe he enjoys my comedy. You ever fucking think of that? But, uh, <laughs> and, uh, anyway, uh, that was awesome. That was like, that's, that's those moments, bro, you, and you realize, man, in Hollywood, when you do this shit, you're like, man, I'm in it. I'm in it. Everybody in Hollywood thinks they're not Hollywood. You understand? Like, everybody in Hollywood is like, eh, but I'm not a Hollywood guy. Yeah, but that's not me. I'm not in Hollywood. Bro, I was outside of the gym eating barbacoa, talking a fucking shaw. Nothing more Hollywood than that, man. Hey, dude, you ever eat barbacoa outside of Equinox while talking a shaw? Yeah, Hollywood. You know, dude? I had my macro bowl. Oh. <laughs> Dude, you know, like, what's going on, man? I'm so Hollywood. Me? I'm Mr. fucking Hollywood, dude. Guess where I started stand-up? Hollywood. That's where I started, dude. People like to be like, I started stand-up in Chicago. I started stand-up in outside of Boston. I started stand-up in New York, and I did 45 spots a night. Fuck that, dude. I drove around Hollywood and started. I did some in WeHo. I did some in NoHo. I did some in SoHo and fucking EHO. And those don't even exist, dude. Chris? It's on, motherfuckers. It's so on, man. I'm basically fucking Hobbs right outside of Equinox. I'm Hobbs, bro. Uh, all right, dude. Let's do some ads. Uh, Liquid IV. <laughs> Liquid IV. Believe it or not, a lot of people end up more dehydrated in winter months. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that insane? I learned that a while ago. And I keep hydrated during the winter. But it's hard, dude. Because cold weather makes dehydration harder to spot. So you're less likely to keep refilling your water bottles. And if you're traveling, dehydration makes jet lag and headaches even worse. (laughs) Take it from me, dude. I got a headache every time I go somewhere. Thankfully, there's liquid IV. The fastest, most uh, efficient way to stay hydrated. What makes liquid IV so effective? Well, cellular transport technology. CTT. Ever heard of it? You ever heard of CTT? No, but now you have. The optimal ratio of glucose, sodium, and potassium delivers water and nutrients into the bloodstream. It's the perfect balance to help you hydrate quickly and more effectively than water alone, dude. So you see what I'm doing? Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. That's not the best. The best is with liquid IV. 
One stick of liquid IV and 16 ounces of water can give as much hydration as two or three bottles of plain water. Isn't that crazy? Liquid IV can provide the same hydration as drinking two to three bottles of water. Insane, dude. Fuels tough workouts, help prevent muscle fatigue, promotes healthy post-workout recovery. You get it. Five essential vitamins, vitamin C, more than an orange and as much potassium as a banana. Get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code congrats at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order on Liquid IV's website. Just go to liquidiv.com and enter promo code congrats to save 25% and get better hydration. That's liquidiv.com. Promo code congrats. Don't wait. Start properly hydrating today. Quit, baby. I keep my teeth clean. Quip makers, quip makers of the of the Quip electric toothbrush wants you to know that one single discovery it matters most for your dental care. It's simply this that if you have good habits, you're good. That means brushing for 2 minutes twice a day and flossing regularly no matter what brand you use. Quip now since you forget that a lot because you're human. It makes it simple, starting with an electric toothbrush, refillable floss, and anti-cavity toothpaste. Quip's electric brush has sensitive sonic vibrations with a built-in timer and 30-second pulses to guide a full and even clean. The Quip floss dispenser comes with pre-marked string to help you use just enough. Plus, Quip delivers fresh brush head, floss, and toothpaste refills to your door every three months with free shipping, so your routine is always right. Three million healthy mouths. Join them all up and get Quip today. And if you go to getquip.com slash congrats right now, you'll get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash congrats. That's G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash congrats. Congrats. Quip, the good habits company. Yeah, man. So <clears throat> that's what's up. I'm having this baby I'm having this baby any day now, and and pretty soon there's gonna be someone even younger than me. If you could believe that, the youngest man alive becomes the fucking second youngest man alive. Can't wait for that. People are like, yeah, your life's going to change. And I'm like, dude, no, it's not. I'm selfish. I'm going to do what I want. I'm still going to go out and do spots at late at night and get co- coffee whenever I want. I won't fucking say. I won't do. I'll do whatever I want. Fuck yeah. If I want to go hang out with my buds, I'm going to go hang out with my buds. No gruff. Yeah, but you need to fucking... Yeah, right, dude. I'm selfish. Yeah, but don't you think you need to spend time with the... Yeah, right. Do what I want. <laughs> You're in for a rude awake. Fuck that. <laughs> No, I'm not. Hi, bye. Why is that on it, you know? Um, yeah, dude. One time when I was a kid in the crib, my mom walked in on my dad holding a toy just out of reach. And I was trying to reach for it and grab it out of the fucking crib. <clears throat> and my dad wouldn't let me grab it. And my mom said, Bill, what the fuck are you doing? And my dad said, teaching him about life (laughs) (laughs) farted when a laugh couldn't held it in dude it's so sexy to fart swear to god swear to god swear to god one time when I was in high school I fucking farted couldn't help it somebody no dude I messed up this story, and it's fine because it makes it better. It's going to be like the fucking movie where you think one thing's happening, and then you realize at the end of the movie that this is really what was happening. Wow. His name was Doug, dude. You know when you do something like fart or trip or something embarrassing, and people see and they notice, and you get so hot inside? You're like, hold on a second. Does anybody want to cook some bacon on my chest? Because now's the time, right? You almost feel tingly. You start losing your vision because you big puss. That happens to me. Well, one time a kid named Doug farted 
And he thought it was going to be, he, I saw the way he was sitting, he was spread, he was trying to spread his cheeks, you know, and make it go, tss. but instead of that, I guess his butt was tight because it went, <laughs> and it was in Mr. Thatch's class, and I turned around, and I saw him, and he was doing this, and I saw him feel hot inside, and it was so subtle, but it fucking ripped. Because it made me feel human. I knew that he was feeling hot inside just by his face. And I was like, that's how that looks. We be meme. Oh. We be meme. And so uh, let's cut that on the thing, by the way, on the video. So this way we know, people know what the fuck I'm talking about. The we be meme from, from The Wire, you know? Yeah. What? <laughs> we don't, we do? Fuck yeah, dude! Ivan, get rid of Ivan. Stay in the room. Ah. One fire would never do that, dude. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, so uh, yeah. What was I talking about? Oh yeah. So Doug fucking farted. But what he should have done, honestly, was said, "Yup, ladies, I'm ladies, I'm free tonight." That's what you should do when you fart. You should immediately go, ladies, I'm free tonight. And not as a joke and not in irony. Mean it. Fuck yeah, dude. Nothing sexier than being you. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Nothing sexier than being you, dude. If you're boring, be boring. That's so goddamn sexy. Own it, dude. Don't think you're good with chicks if you're not. If you're not, then don't be good with chicks and own it, and all of a sudden you're sexy. Swear to God. You gotta be you, dude. There's so many people out there doing dumb shit, like getting fucking really wide pants, or like or like getting like, uh, you know, circular glasses, like these chicks with the circular glasses, or they, everyone thinks they're bad rabbit, or whatever the fuck that guy's name, bad bunny. Everyone thinks they're bad bunny taking pictures like this. Keep your tongue in your fucking mouth. You're the same, dude. Like, I, I I really mean I'm a mean girl, dude. And this is coming from a guy who fucking does that shit, too. So you know it's real. <laughs> you know it's real. <laughs> Fart and say, ladies, drinks on me. Fart and then say, I guess I'm fucking tonight. What the fuck? Bad Bunny put a third eye? Is that is that a real thing? That's not Photoshop? It's Photoshop? He went out like that with a third eye above his eye? Oh, it's, I mean, it doesn't even look good, you know? Hey, dude, you're fucking so rich. Get a guy to do it better. Get the guy from the island to do it. That movie with Ewan McGregor and Scarlett Johansson. Oh, this looks like fucking chocolate. It looks like a cake. Um, Dude, Bad Bunny always makes the faces in between the photos. Bad Bunny is always making a face of a, a, a face on the way to making a face. He, this is a, a photo of Bad Bunny. He'll be like this. Or like, hey, man, you're on your way. Keep going. And then take the photo. Posted a picture of J-Lo on Twitter and I was like, God damn, she's fucking 52 and she looks like that. And so many people were like, photoshopped. And it's like, bro, everything's photoshopped, man. She still looks banging. That's J-Lo. But dude, stop getting those fucking weird glasses, man. You're not Bad Bunny. If you're Bad Bunny, cool. Bad Bunny's the new prince. Do whatever you want. But don't be that guy. Don't be. Um, Should I get a new fucking watch anyway dude i guess shit gets spent when you get a kid <clears throat> but uh that's it man that's not it though we got like a bunch of a bunch of fucking times left one time i was driving through fucking new jersey and we were going on a trip and my dad stopped at a toll and i was like dad how much longer is it left and and he didn't know and i said come on dad and i was like ask the guy and i was being such a cranky little bitch and i was like dad ask the guy <laughs> Ask the guy in the toll booth I wanted to ask. I said, Dad, ask the guy how many times. 
I said, Dad, ask the guy how many times is it? Like, and I meant to say, how long is it going to be? And my dad said, oh, Chris, shut the fuck up. And he looked at the guy and he says, how many times is it? And then drove away. Dude, that was so awesome. I, I never forgot it and I never will. My dad looked at the guy and said, hey, how many times is it? And drove away. The guy was probably like, what the fuck? Who's that guy that looks like George Harrison that just asked me how many times is it? If your dad didn't look like George Harrison in the fucking 80s, you're a robot. You were made, not born. Or Mike Ditka, you know? If your dad was white in the 80s and didn't look like George Hammer Harrison or Mike Ditka, check your circuit. You're not human, dude. Every white guy in fucking 1984 looked like Mike Ditka or George Harrison, period. If you're lucky, they looked like the guy that was on Step by Step, the dad. Whoever Cody's dad was. But anyway, um, Bad Bunny, wow, dude. He's got a dream catcher on his chin. Okay. Um, anyway, dude, this, oh, ads? We'll do ads and then we'll talk about this other thing I want to talk about. Honey Book. You've done it. Yay, your creative passion is now your full-time job. You did it, dude. You understand? You're achieving your goals. But maybe you wish someone would have told you how much time drafting proposals, creating contracts, and chasing down payments would take. The stuff that isn't your fave. The good news is that HoneyBook is so helpful with all those tedious admin tasks. So you can get back to doing what you love, which is the goal. HoneyBook is an online business management tool that organizes your client communications, bookings, contracts, and invoices all in one place, okay? So it's not confusing. It's perfect for freelancers, entrepreneurs, or small business owners that want to consolidate services they already use like QuickBooks, Google Suite, Excel, and MailChimp. With HoneyBook, you can automate... You can automate your busy work. They have easy-to-use templates for emails, proposals, brochures, and invoices. And right now, HoneyBook is offering our listeners 50% off when you visit tryhoneybook.com slash congrats. Payment is flexible, and this promotion applies whether you pay monthly or annually. T-R-Y-H-O-N-E-Y-B-O-O-K dot com slash congrats. Go to try but try honeybook.com slash congrats for 50% off your first year. That's try honeybook.com slash congrats. Bambi, B-A-M-B-E-E. -E. When running a business, HR issues can kill you. Wrongful termination suits, minimum wage, minimum wage requirements, labor regulations, and HR manage, uh, manager's salaries aren't cheap. An average of $70,000 a year, dude. K. Bambi, spelled B-A-M-B-E-E, -E, was created specifically for small businesses. You can get a dedicated HR manager, craft HR policy, and maintain your compliance, all for just $99 a month. With Bambi, you can change HR from your biggest liability to your biggest strength. Okay? Your dedicated HR manager is available by phone, email, or real-time chat. Uh, which is great. From onboarding to terminations, they customize your policies to fit your business and help you manage your employees day to day. All for just $99 a month. Month to month, no hidden fees, cancel any time. Uh, go to Bambi.com slash congrats right now and schedule your free HR audit. That's Bambi.com slash congrats. Spelled BAM to the B-E-E dot -E com slash congrats. You did it, guys. Text me, 818-239-7087. I do all that. I text you back. Try to. If you're listening to this on the plane, I want you to recline your seat right now and get it in that guy's lap behind you. That's what I want you to do. And then when he says, hey, don't do that, you say, why? I'm a respectful baby. That's what you do. And then you point to him and you say, you, stop being a piece of shit. And if you do that, let me know about it. Talking about Heineken because they because I like it and they pay me for it. Pete Pablo, um, dude, this Buffalo Wild Wings thing is just insane, dude. The Buffalo Wild Wings thing. Pull it up. Is when they. The Astros got caught cheating in like what nineteen or no two thousand some year they won the World Series 
And I guess that they just came out that they were cheating or something, right? Something like that? No, you don't know? Yeah? Basically. Very basically. If I'm wrong, who gives a shit? Basically it. So so the, the coach or the com- or whatever the fuck was like apologizing kind of and be like, cheers never win, so we didn't win, so don't worry about it. Whatever he did was the ass dick about it, you know? And so also you better believe if I was playing baseball, I would be cheating so hard. Like there's no way I wouldn't be cheating. I would be betting against us and then not playing as well. I would be like saying, no, that's not what happened. I would be doing that kind of shit all day long. That's not what happened. I'd be throwing people under the bus. That's not why he fucking, dude, that's why I'm the catcher because he fucking did that. I should be right field. And they'd be like, oh, well, you know, this is what Dalia says. And some other guy would be like, no. And then I hope I would get the leg up in a cheating fashion. You understand? Because it's just baseball. And I'd be raking in mills. But, uh, so Rob Harris tweets, breaking Manchester City ban, uh, breaking Manchester City ban from Champions League for two seasons by F and find 30 million euros U E F A F A and um so th- bu- so Buffalo Wild Wings writes that's how you punish a team that cheats and i guess people thought and i wouldn't even have known but i guess Buffalo Wild Wings change it was saying that was insinuating about how the the Astros should be punished so Houston took to Twitter and started roasting them first of all Houston I love you I legitimately you're one of the cities I like going to and performing in the most I love Texas dude and you know I wouldn't say this right now if I wasn't serious I love Dallas. I love Austin. I love Houston. San Antonio is the place. And I fucking love Texas because Houston, sure, it's hot, but it's also banging. Everyone in there is either a hot chick or a tall corn husking dude. Love it. Dallas, love how the girls go out with the hair that looks like Battlefield Earth, just sprayed up like it's 1987. Love the dudes in Dallas that won't not tuck in their shirts no matter what the outfit. Love Austin. Sure, it pisses me off that the slogan is keep Austin weird because you're not funky. You're just a city with a bunch of weirdos in it that, and every one out of every eight people has a mustache including the girls, because they think it's interesting, but they're still banging, okay? And everyone's there for music. But Austin, love you. San Antonio, you have the river walk and everybody's drunk. All right. Now listen, love Texas, okay? But Houston, and I hate saying this, dude, but we have a problem. Because, dude, the thing is, You became a little bit of a bitch when Buffalo Wild Wings, change it, happened to say this thing about Manchester and the FA, all right? Because you started saying, well, I'll never eat there again. Cutting up Houston Buffalo Wild Wings fucking cards. By the way, what kind of a fucking fatso are you that you have a Buffalo Wild Wings membership card? Hey, guy, cut that up anyway. Guarantee you were sweaty when doing it. Also, it's 2020. Who's eating wings? Who's still eating wings, dude? You know the last time I put a fucking wing in my mouth? At a party a few years ago because I was starving. And that's all that there was, and I got there late, dude. You should not be eating wings, man. That's gross. Hookers or fucking whatever the... Hooters? That place? Fucking legitimately thought it was named Hookers for a second. Like, come on, man. What is this place? Hooters, dude? Hey, dude, for real, just call it Hookers. 
Hooters? No, don't call it hookers because I believe the, those girls should be making that money and you should be tipping those girls and those girls are working hard and some of them got a fucking family to f- provide for. I like those girls. You're, 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 uh, you're, uh, you're trying to make that money and you're being positive in society. But company, just call your place tits, you know? Uh, anyway, these fucking people in Houston were like, look at this, look at this. Let's just pull up some of these, find some of them and we'll just, and we'll just, come on, dude. Where's my Twitter at? Where my Twitter at? Uh, go to some of them. One, go to, got this gift for Christmas. Look at this. By the way, got this gift for Christmas. They're cutting up the Buffalo Wild Wings card. Dude, you got that gift for Christmas from a who? Someone that fucking hates you? Hey, dude, that's Buffalo Wild. That's a Buffalo Wild Wings gift card. Dude, sad. Hey, guy, that's cool. Also, sad. Um, Look at this guy, Kenny Swift. This cuck, this cuck name, by the way. And you just lost business in the fourth largest city in the U.S. and surrounding areas. That's how you punish social media accounts that pop off with a DJ Khaled gif that says, congratulations, you played yourself. Kenny Swift with the fucking profile pic of that cat that that lady's yelling at or whatever the fuck it is. Dude, shut up, man. Shut up. By the way, the Houston Astros cheated. So you're coming into to defense... For people that robbed money in base, in baseball, you butt hurt. Kenny Swift couldn't sound more like a fucking country singer, by the way. God damn, that's so ridiculous that they troll. Fuck you, fuck it, dude. Houston, you're being a... The people in Houston that are doing this, you're being a bitch. You're being a straight-up bitch, dude. You're being a butt-hurt motherfucker. Dude, I would have... I don't eat wings. I wanted to run to Buffalo Wild Wings and get all the wings and put them in my pockets. And they'd be like, you want a bag? And i go, N- are you kidding me, dude? I'm wearing these. No bag? Fuck that. They go in my pockets pockets wings and then this happened get ready to be pissed my babies buffalo wild wings pulls the even more bitch move and they tweet back a day later so last night was the roast of buffalo wild wings courtesy of the city of houston and honestly we deserved it. Well done, H-Town, for coming to your team's defense. And we're sorry about what we posted. Hey, Buffalo Wild Wings, you just solidified something. I'll never eat there. Because you went back on an opinion that, first of all, doesn't matter. And now... It's news, and now I know about it, and I'm not eating there. And guess what, Buffalo Wild Wings? And I'm serious about this. Next time I see my friend Jason Statham, I'm telling him not to fucking eat there too. So that's two fucking huge, equally famous guys that are not going to go to Buffalo Wild Wings anymore. God, how I imagine being sorry about it, about making fun. By the way, Buffalo Wild Wings, why are you even tweeting about this? The only thing you should be tweeting about is, hey, we got wings. That's every tweet that Buffalo Wild Wings should tweet. Should be them saying, hey, we got wings. Or reminder, colon, we got wings. Or hey, do you like our wings? Or, hey, you must like our wings. Why are you tweeting about the Astros at all? But if you do tweet about the Astros, do it once. And if you take a stance and pop off in a humorous way 
and then you feel the heat? Welcome to my world, you bitch ass. But don't apologize for it, especially when you know you're right. See, this is why I can't do I can't trust you motherfuckers now. Because you did something that you thought you stood behind. And then because the mob came running, the fat, sweaty-palmed, buffalo wild wings eating, uh, fucking gift card having as gift certificate motherfuckers, they kept coming. You guys felt the heat and apologized about some shit that you know is right. And you know that you still stand behind. Or you don't and you change your mind because these fucking fatsos, fine then, you know what? I don't trust you. So how can I trust what you give to me to put inside my body? Wings? No. Don't eat wings, by the way, dude, uh, unless you want to get cancer. They're smothered in radioactive bullshit. Hey, dude, they're orange. Don't eat anything that's orange except an orange. For real, man. That's crazy, dude. Fuck Buffalo Wild Wings. I ain't got no motherfucking That's why I fucked your bitch. Buffalo Wild Wings. I ain't got no motherfucking That's why I fucked your bitch. Buffalo Wild Wings. That's awesome when I do it like that. I ain't got no motherfucking That's why I fucked your bitch. Buffalo Wild Wings. I ain't Suck got it. no motherfucker. So I fuck your bitch. Buffalo Wild Wings. Hell yeah, dude. That's awesome. I'm glad I figured that out. This is a silly goose time. I'm fucking, I have no, sp- I'll never have, I mean, dude, I can't believe I have the sponsors I have. For real. I talk to my guy. Sometimes it gets me paid to do social media posts once or twice, maybe. And I'm like, how come these motherfuckers aren't, dude, I see these people out there doing shit. Give me money to fucking talk about you. And he's like, yeah, well, a little bit of a loose cannon. Yeah, dude. I ain't Suck got it. no motherfucker. So I fucked your bitch. Buffalo Wild Wings. This is grassroots, bro. I'm Bernie Sanders, the mean girl. I'm Bernie Sanders, dude. Imagine if Bernie Sanders wins. That's going to mobilize the right like these fucking Houston Buffalo Wild Wings eating motherfuckers. Who, by the way, are the, are the same people. There's no cro- there, the crossover is 100. percent The right, dude. I I can't. I, I, I it's so. I can't stop thinking about this Buffalo Wild Wings. I can't believe people would be mad at Buffalo Wild Wings in Houston and not want to go there now because that's what they said. First of all, and then for Buffalo Wild Wings to apologize for it is just unbelievable. If Bernie Wing wins, dude, wow. You don't know my political stances. You don't know who I vote for. And I like it like that. I make fun of everybody. Trump is an insane person. If Bernie wins, dude, wow. It's going to be insane if Bernie wins. It, it, it will be fucking insane if Bernie wins. We will live in the craziest time of our lives. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying maybe I'll vote for him, maybe I won't. You don't know, dude. You don't know. What you do know is I like Buttigieg. And one time I was talking about Buttigieg, and I was like, I like that motherfucker. I think he's got a shot. And, dude, this was way back when nobody gave a fuck, you know, except for, like, some people in wherever the fuck he's from. What is it, Ohio? Where's he from? Iowa? Idaho? Some weird-ass Idaho, Iowa, Ohio. There's too many states that, that sound like that. Anyway, um, Indiana, that's what it is. I knew there were too many vowels in it. So, and some dude tweeted me, and I remember he was like, my man Chris Leah thinks Buttigieg has a shot and did crying laughing emojis. This guy has a 0% polling. Yeah, bro, he's a front runner now, you motherfucking bitch ass. He's a front runner now, you motherfucking bitch ass. Dude, I would love to see Buttigieg and fucking Trump just talk. I would love to see that. That would be my favorite because I think Bernie will get flustered. I think Bernie could lose his cool. Buttigieg? Well, that's not true, Trump. Facts, 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 facts. And Trump will just be like, oh, yeah, you look like Alfred E. Newman. Man, I would love to. That would be the WWF. WWF. Welcome to live WWD. Yeah, man. Anyway. 
I just love that no matter who gets picked, there's a smear campaign against them, no matter what. That's why the, what Trump did was just own it was just amazing, dude. I mean, God, that guy's a fucking lunatic straight up. But he was like, yeah, I fucking did all that stuff. Oh, you're too sensitive. Wrong, you know? Uh, Anyway, whatever. The diehard motherfuckers are the craziest, dude. The diehard motherfuckers for anybody are the craziest. Like, the guy you're following could be wrong. Did you know that? He's not even you. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? He's not even you. You don't even stand behind what you stand behind that much. But people are like, no, fuck that. Bernie, Trump. You don't even stay. He's not even you, dude. That's another body that's away from you. <laughs> wow. I'm a mean girl. And that's about it. I've got other th- stuff I could talk about. But, bro, you know how many things I had written down in this podcast, man? How many things I had written down? Three. Three things. Two, two. I had two things. One fire turned into one higher because he told me I had two things written down. I had two things written down right before I sat down. I had fucking Jason Statham written, and then I had another thing written that I forget. What was it? One fire doesn't even know. Back to one fire. And so because I didn't remember it, it doesn't matter because that's how unimportant it is. And then also he said, hey, why don't you talk, one fire, so why don't you talk about the Buffalo Wild Wing thing? And I was like, you know what? That's a good thing. So that was the third thing. So now I did an hour, okay? I wrote down fucking two things and one fire had one thing. And, and I did it, dude. And I did it for you. But make no mistake, dude. Even though I lie, I'm not lying about this. I did it mostly for the money. I did it for the sponsors that are paying me. Because you know why, dude? Because I love money. I love having money and I love paying for things and buying things and then walking out of the place where I bought it and being like this. Doesn't matter. My life's the same. My life's the same when the money subtracts and also my life is absolutely the same whether I get the fucking thing or not, which is so sad, really. I'm a consumer. I'm a fucking piece of shit is what I'm trying to say. I'm a piece of shit. But also, it's okay to feel like that, but also, I'm a person and I'm a human guy. That was more, what I just said was more unimportant than what what I said in the first 30 seconds of the podcast, so. Um, Anyway. Maybe I should have a guest soon, like a real guest. You know what, dude? I should have a real guest. I'm not having a guest until I can have a fucking super crazy famous person. If you want, if you're listening or if you know somebody that's super famous, suggest whoever, tag them on Twitter and tell them that they should be the first guest. It'll be good for them. This podcast is enormous, okay? Uh, People that are like even super famous, like not Elon Musk. Of course he's not going to do it. But I'm talking about people that are like movie stars and shit. This is a big podcast, dude. I, I mentioned Buffalo Wild Wings. We got to mobilize, dude. We got to mobilize, dude. Us babies really have to mobilize. I'm trying to be that Bernie Sanders motherfucker. That Donald Trump motherfucker. That just says what goes, dude. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, yeah. Tell them on Twitter. And if you know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody, you should tell them, hey, Chris Lee is looking for a first guest. You should do it, Sam Jackson or whoever the fuck, you know? Uh, All right, guys. Uh, You guys are great. And uh, thank you very much. Oh, shit. I got to look at the back here. You can text me at whatever the fucking number is. And uh, also, oh, man, of course it's the last. It's always the last place you look, right? It's always the goddamn last place you look. There it is, dude. The last card I looked at is what it is. Uh, support the show by buying merch. Oh, the the Life Rips hoodies, the um, the 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 tie dyed ones are going to be uh, back in business very soon here. 
uh, this week. They're gonna so they're, they sell out immediately. The black ones sell out even quicker, but we're doing the tie dyed ones now again. And uh, su- subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. It really helps. It helps us by putting. You know, I I still am in the back of my head thinking about doing some weeks where I do two a week, and I can do that if the numbers go up because I just it's it. I can do it now and it's worth it because, you know, for the podcast, I can make more money, but I also don't want to like dilute it. But if the numbers are that much better, then forget it, dude. I'll do it. I will do it. So subscribe to the YouTube channel, listen, share it, try and grow this cult because this is a cult, dude. And you're not doing your fucking due diligence as a baby if you're not helping to grow the cult. Wear your merch at other people's, other com- comedi- comedians' shows, especially Brian Callen. Uh, in a loving way, not in a fucking, any other way than a loving way, because we love and support all comedians, man. We do. Uh, so, yeah. I got my special coming out soon, dude. I don't, I can't tell you yet. It's not official, the, the date, but it's 99% sure, and I can't wait to tell you. And it's soon. And it's soon, my babies. It's soon, my babies. So West Palm Beach, finish up those tickets, get those. Uh, and Las Vegas, we got some new August dates in Las Vegas. And I think my Atlantic City thing just went on sale. I don't know, but I'm going to do it Atlantic City very soon. So keep checking the website for that and the Life Rips merch and all the other merch and the Silly Goose Time hoodies. And you got it, my babies. You guys are great. Thank you very much. This is coming from me, Mean Girl Chris Kalia. Congratulations! 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 Congratulations!